December 25, 2023. Ukraine war, approximately nine years and 11 months into the invasion of Crimea. Day 670, and Christmas number two, of special Putin's three-day operation. Big picture. The plucky and determined Ukrainian defenders again have refused to accept the tyranny of the Kremlin on this day. Normally, people do big happy holiday specials, but today the narrative has to be changed. Ukraine is at war with Russia, a nation with five times the population base, and about 20 times the resource base. This war started, for those in the West, as an extension of the 2014 Maidan revolution and invasion by the Kremlin. As a defense of Russian sympathetic groups, there was uncertainty in the West as to how much Ukraine should concern themselves with keeping territories that were clearly going to be a problem. It seemed logical for many in the West to let those smaller areas simply be distinct, until such time as time brought cooler heads on both sides. However, the Kremlin changed that narrative by its own choices and rhetoric. In 2022, the Kremlin's major story to the rest of the world was nuclear threats. A position unheard of since the Cold War, except out of the tiniest of rogue nations, North Korea. But the Kremlin persisted in every political venue to push the issue of Ukraine as an action backed by nuclear arms. Perhaps this could be forgiven, after all, it's only bravado, nobody takes Putin and Lavrov and the Kremlin that seriously, when they clearly have their own family members in the places they claim they want to nuke. But then the Kremlin did something else. All of 2023 the Kremlin started making claim that this action was to be the start of a new world order, a new way of thinking, the end of the US and the West. And with those words, they have created an opening for a new global political narrative. New order. The Kremlin has created a narrative that expresses that the existence of nuclear arsenal, along with national expansionism of empire, is what the world must expect. We must agree that if we don't have nuclear weapons, a nuclear armed empire will invade us. The Kremlin states, unequivocally, it is their authority to make all the globe into their territory. But I can hear the cheap seats yelling about US imperialism this, and US interventionism that. I hear them say, how can the US talk bad about the Kremlin after X, Y, Z? I give credit to those without an answer, it's never an easy discussion in any way. But here, let's look at what Russia is saying again. Ukraine, being too close to the Kremlin, and being historically in the sphere of influence if not a vassal state of Moscow, must accept the Kremlin's invasion and removal of all national sentiments, else Putin will use nukes. The three sisters on the Baltics housing nukes not much further than Ukraine you ask? Those three, Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, the Kremlin sits silent, because it's not about nukes being too close. When has the US invaded to expand its territory? Has the US, using threat of nuclear annihilation to the whole earth, taken land and erased nationality in the name of the United States of America? It hasn't once. Not once has the US used nuclear arms or nuclear threats to make itself the leader of a nation to its extinction. The US has placed military facilities and removed dictators, junters, and communist governments, yet the US has never once gone into a neighboring country on nuclear threat and attempted to erase an entire ethnicity to absorb it into an empire. The Kremlin and its media have repeatedly told Russians that they will be destroying everyone who desires to keep anything of Ukraine, language or otherwise. Why would they say this? Having invaded in theory that Ukraine would just quit, now that the Kremlin has a bloody nose from starting a fight, they want the poor Russians and Prestations to kill the Ukrainians for fighting back. This is an unheard of narrative in advanced nations. Not heard since the start of World War II, when the Germans and Japanese were making such imperial claims. Empire by nuclear threat. We already said it, but hear this again. The option the Kremlin is leaving the nations of the world, going forward, is to have nuclear weapons, or suffer nation-destroying and absorbing invasion. Resistance would be risk of nuclear annihilation for fighting back or seeking assistance. The world this narrative leaves, we think is obviously very dangerous. We consider some of the nations of the world which already have nukes. India, Pakistan and North Korea hold enough firepower to destroy the lives of billions, and unless you have a stronger stomach, that list probably twists your stomach just a bit when internal safety capability is considered. Perhaps the leadership will stay wise and never use these tools. But it's not the generally respected leadership alone which might use a weapon. What happens if a terrorist group gets a hold of these? These nations will defend themselves by saying they have protections. Fine, we can accept this for now, it is de facto and to date, we believe, true. But to the greater point, it answers nothing. Moscow isn't telling these nations to keep their nukes well protected, it's only telling all the other nations of the world to get their own nukes. Immediately. Countries like Brazil, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Iran, South Korea, Taiwan, Chile, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, Finland, Sweden, Kuwait, Kazakhstan, Morocco, Spain, and any other nation that gets a fear they will be next if they aren't armed. Some of those nations I would expect would be quite safe with nuclear arms, at least in so much as they would not likely let them be stolen. 
But if we are honest with the average stability of much of the world's governments generally, is it realistic to believe that doubling or tripling the number of nuclear armed states will result in a cadre of safer and better established countries? We doubt it very much. The costs to produce and upkeep nuclear arms, just for the storage security if nothing else, is not spent without noticeable changes. Taxes must be raised, or other projects must be abandoned, suggesting that already unstable nations may become even less stable as their spending disappears into the costs of secrecy and sheltering of nuclear bombs, often in the storage sheds of their otherwise abysmal military. More dangerous, it doesn't take the intention of the holders of these bombs for these bombs to be used or triggered. A dedicated group could overthrow dozens of this world's governments as it stands. Now a wannabe tyrant doesn't even have to take the palace, they can simply interdict or capture a storage facility. And lest we claim that there are no people who would use such weapons, Beslan School, the World Trade Center, and even this week in Prague, show blood in defiance of such simplicity. The Kremlin must be defeated. The Kremlin must be defeated in Ukraine. Having created a global narrative of empire by nuclear threat, if the Kremlin is allowed to show a victory in Ukraine, this path of nations trying to avoid being next on the list of nationalist expansionism by a nuclear-armed nation, is unavoidable. The Kremlin claims itself, and is agreed by too many, to be a great leader in a bold new future. Bold indeed, bald even, barren, as bones stripped of flesh by fire. And randomly, the outcome of the black market trade of tactical or strategic nuclear bombs cannot be predicted by normal state relations. Any number of actors private or public, principled or self-indulgent, gaining arms of this destructive force leads to only the cognition that where these end up being used would be an endless target list, absolutely as random as the whims of the twisted human mind. The Kremlin must be defeated in Ukraine be it militarily, by internal overthrow or vote, or by international political victory, the narrative and actions of the Kremlin since 2022 must be shown folly. If the narrative of empire by nuclear threat is allowed to stand going forward, the thinking world necessarily becomes very strict on passage of goods and peoples. The world becomes extremely dangerous, even where strict borders are enforced. And it won't be enough to have a media victory, it must be clear that the Kremlin was rebuffed sufficiently by the world that such intents will not be unpunished going forward. Ukraine world related. Ukraine's military victory comes from more tools and from keeping their own meager production going forwards. HIMARS launchers and accompanying missiles, Patriot systems and counter-battery radar from the US can do much, and the US makes them better than anyone else. Artillery shells and barrels from Spain and South Korea and others are still needed, and these nations have the skills and resources to make it happen. The EU generally can provide medical supplies, troop equipment and small arms, and this will allow them to keep their factories generally unchanged. Germany and Sweden's vehicles are second to none, and their assistance being at hand makes a great pair of reasons to be looked to for help in this arena. And the world, as a whole, needs to stand up to Putin and kick him in the testicles, for making all of us less safe with his careless Kremlin's choices in the public sphere. Slava Bogu. Hero Yim Slava. Shazlavoho Vam Rezdva. Like and subscribe.